Okay, so we're going to have a quick run through our six logic gates that we need to know for comp2. So the first logic gate we'll look at is the OR gate. So this is probably the simplest gate apart from the NOT gate. And with the OR gate, we usually have two inputs. So we'll call our two inputs X and Y. Now there's four possible scenarios of the inputs we could have here. So it could be that both X and Y are zero. It could be that X is zero and Y is one. It could be that X is one and Y is zero or both of them there could be a one. Let's call our output Q. And in order for Q to be true, we either need X to be true or we need Y to be true because we're using the OR gate. So in our first instance here, X is zero, which is false. Y is zero, which is false. So neither of those are true. So our output is going to be false or zero. In the second instance, we've got X is zero and Y is one. So one of those inputs is true, obviously the Y. So we are going to have a one or a true for our output. Again, the third scenario, X is true or one, Y is false, zero. So one of those is true. So again, the output is going to be true. And finally, for our last instance there, we've got X is true and Y is true. But don't forget, we're looking at the OR gate. So as long as one of them is true, it doesn't matter which one, or both of them are true, our output will be a 1. So with the OR gate, in order for the output to be true, we need one or the other, or both, to be true. Our second gate is our AND gate. Slightly different, although again we have our X and Y inputs, and we could have the same four possibilities, we could have 0 and 0. 0 and 1, 1, 0, 1 and 1. Again, we'll have our output as Q. And in this instance, we need X and Y to be true in order to satisfy the output as being true. So in our first instance, X is not true and Y is not true. So our output is going to be a 0, not true. Our second, we've got X is 0 and Y is 1. So again, we they're not both true. So we're going to have 0. Thirdly, 1 and 0, again, they're not both true, because don't forget we need X and Y here. And finally, X is 1, Y is 1. Yes, X and Y are both 1, so yes, we are going to have a 1 for our output with that gate. Thirdly, probably the simplest one of the six, is our NOT gate. And all that the NOT gate does is flip the bits. So, if you imagine... We've got X as our input, just one input in this instance. X could either be 0 or it could be 1. Our output, using the NOT gate, simply will just be the complete opposite. So 0 changes to 1, 1 changes to 0. Thirdly, we've got a mixture of our NOT gate and our OR gate. So this is a NOR. And NOR, the best way to demonstrate it is probably in two steps. So first of all, we'll look at a normal OR gate with X and Y as our inputs. Same four possible scenarios. And a normal OR gate, notice the symbol I'm going to use for this OR gate now. X or Y will give us 0, 1, 1, 1. Because don't forget with an OR, we're looking for X or Y to be true to give us a true output. Now to turn that from a normal OR into a NOR, we just simply apply the NOT gate to this now. So X or Y. To show that we're not in that, we'll put a line above it, which means NOT. And all we're going to do is take this column here and flip the bits. Because don't forget the NOT simply flips the bits. So 0 will become 1, 1 will become 0, 0, and 0. So NOR is this result here. Okay, so we could say 0, NOR 1 is 0, 1, NOR 1 is 0, 0, NOR 0 is 1. The next gate is our NAND gate. NAND gate, 
similar process to the north. We'll do it in two steps. So we've got x and y as our inputs. Again, the same four possible scenarios. And we'll start off just by doing our normal AND gate. So we have x, don't forget the symbol for an AND is just a dot. So x and y. Let's start off using our normal AND. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. So don't forget with the AND gate we need x and y to be true in order to satisfy the output. And then again, exactly the same as we did with the OR, we'll just now flip those bits from X and Y to get X and Y. So similarly, X and Y, line above to show that it's a NOT, and we'll just flip those bits. So 0 becomes a 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and 1 to 0. So this column here is our X and Y. So as an example, we could say 0 and 0 is 1. 1 NAND 0 is 1, or 1 NAND 1 is 0. Our final gate, slightly different to the others, is XOR. Now XOR is similar to an OR, but only one of the inputs must be exclusively true to satisfy the output. So we'll start off again by drawing out our table with our two inputs of X and Y our same four possible scenarios and our output here we'll call Q so with the XOR we need X exclusively or Y to be true so only one of them can be true for the output to be true so in our first instance here we've got 0 or 0 so none of those are true so we're not going to have a true output secondly 0 or 1 Yes, only one of those is exclusively true, so we're going to have a 1. Thirdly, 1 XOR 0, only one of those is exclusively true, so we're going to have a 1. And finally, 1 XOR 1, they're both true, so if that was a normal OR gate, we would have a 1. But don't forget, with XOR, it can only be one of those to be true to give us a true output, so that is going to be 0. Okay, so this here, our result, is the answer to XOR. If we just compare that to a normal OR gate, just so that you can see there's only one simple difference, if I draw X or Y, we know that X or Y is 0, 1, 1, 1, from our example we did of the normal OR gate a couple of uh, examples ago. And then if we look at X, X or Y, notice the symbol for X or there, and we know our answer because we've got that over here is 0, 1, 1, 0. We can see the only difference is this final example here where our inputs are both 1s. So it changes from a 1 to a 0.